so it is currently midnight so it is Monday I had a very bad chronic pain night I would flip around and show my face but it's really dark right now the only light I have on is this one but you know today was a good uh, Sunday was a good day but I ended up getting well I shouldn't say getting so some context while you look at my beautiful white white girl rice balls um, this is my current comfort food it is my current safe food it's it's all I want to eat it it's really bad for me but I'm doing myself a service I didn't really eat dinner tonight well tonight it's it's Monday but it's midnight so whatever anyway tangent aside so about a week ago I got a bug bite I didn't talk about it because it's on a certain okay well if I if I don't say where it is then it's people are gonna assume the worst I got it on my boob and I got it right on my areola like on the cusp of my areola I originally thought it might have been an ingrown hair or something because sometimes you know I'm at that age you get it you get a titty hair from time to time it wasn't that and so it was definitely a bug bite of some kind and I didn't mess with it because it's on the titty and I didn't want to have it scar and it just didn't go away and I thought it'd be fine and then last night it started to well not last night I mean earlier on Sunday it started to hurt it started to hurt real bad so I took a picture and I sent it to my friend who's a nurse and my friend was like oh that is hella infected you need to go to a doctor and I'm like what and I'm like but I didn't have any pain and I got it like a week ago and they were like oh yeah that can happen with bug bites they can get infected from just wearing clothes and blah 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 you should go to a doctor so I'm like sick and then after that for all the work I did yesterday because I did a lot of work so I did not vlog much my back had one of the worst spasms I had had in a long time so on top of titty spider bite, or I'm assuming it's a spider bite, it could have been a mosquito bite, but I'm assuming it's a spider bite. On top of spider bite, my back gave out, so I ended up laying in bed for like the rest of the night. I knocked out for a few hours, and then I woke up, and then I was like, oh no, I am now awake. And my titty hurts worse than before. I've got a band-aid and some ointment on it that I double-checked with my nurse friend should be okay, so yeah, I was gonna stream today as in Monday, but um... After talking to my nurse friend again, they were like, oh no, you if it is if it's hurting worse now after you put ointment on it, and it was medical ointment, like again, I checked with my nurse friend, I didn't just like pick random ointment. I sent photos and everything. Um, they were like, yeah, you no, go to an urgent care tomorrow. You better safe than sorry. If the ointment makes it hurt more, it means it's like way worse in fact than we thought. So I'm not freaking out, because again, I got this bite like a week ago. It's only hurting now, but I am not going to sit and wait for it to get bad. Especially with it being in a sensitive area like that. So, I get to go to the doctor today. Isn't that great? So, I'm probably going to vlog, like, before I'm there and when I'm leaving. Because I'm not going to pull my camera out in the doctor's office. I'm sure there's, like, a law against that, too. So, Okay, so, hey, guys. It is... I hope you like the new view. Um, it is 11.20 on 9.12, so it's Monday for like a whole other 10 minutes. But um, I didn't get to talk much today and I didn't vlog much because it's been very emotional. So uh, a couple things went. Doctor's visit went great. A little painful, but great. Uh, got the bug bite taken care of. I do need to watch it though and see if I get any flu-like symptoms. That's something the doctor told me to really like look out for. I did that. I did a mini stream. Uh, Sawyer gave me a raid of like a kachunk in people. I think I had the most people I've ever had in a stream there. And the brain brain worms were not good. <laughs> I was in, not in a good headspace, so I couldn't do a long stream. And then lots of bad mood things happened. But we're getting back up. We got good news finally, which is 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 good. I need <laughs> we needed good news today. Yes, we did. But um, I decided in my weird haze of today. I beat Death of the Outsider on low chaos mode <sighs> again. So that's, well not again, I did it for the first time. I beat it on high chaos and then low chaos. So that was fun. Um, I'm not gonna get into the personal nitty gritty stuff, but I decided, cause I wrote some stuff down in my little notebook. Sawyer got this for me. It's it's Sam, if you guys didn't know. Uh, I think it's like a female version of Sam, because he's got like little pigtails, but it's by uh, The Hollow Fox. He, Sawyer picked this up for me at like uh, some convention he went to, and it is currently my notes and my YouTube. Like my, was, you were catching me reading, writing it at my other 
thing. My chin shell is going crazy. Anyway, but I am on a huge rating kick right now. I have not shut up about this. I'm not done with it yet, though. The Cotton Candy Massacre. I'll, I'll take a picture of it in the daylight because it's a dark cover book and my apartment's currently really dark because Chloe's going to bed. But I decided, um, I know this is crazy, but, but yeah, I was watching. I decided because I'm on a reading kick and I want a challenge that's kind of fun and I get through my TBR because like a really big TBR, um, I am going to do a readathon this week. If you guys don't know what a readathon is, because I know mostly artists follow me, uh, readathons are things that people on BookTok and BookTube do where they do like little personal challenges of reading a bunch of books in a week. And normally I'm a person where I'm like, I don't really want to do that. I, I, I you know, because Usually the people you see who do it on Book Talk and BookTube, um, it's kind of their job to do that. Or it's like their one big hobby is reading, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Like I said, I love reading, but that's how they can get through like giant 400, 600, 800 page tomes in like a week. And most people can't, you know, so I found one that I think is pretty interesting because I need to get into the autumn spirit. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the vibe. I pulled out not really autumn but I pulled out my bat lights. Uh, one of my patrons got me this a while ago, and I just couldn't have it, like, out. But now that I've moved my desk and I'm moving things around, I can probably have it out more. But anyway, the one I found, because I wrote it down, I guess I wrote it down on paper, because I like doing that, is the Autumn Readathon. I don't remember who did this. I just found a random one on YouTube. Because all the ones that we're finding were in, like, November, which, don't get me wrong, I want to do that one too. But I might move the November one to October, because I've got a lot of stuff planned in October. So anyway, I want to see if I can do it, because I've actually never technically finished a readathon. I've gotten really close, but I never finished one. So I'm, I want to see if I can do it. So because... I didn't do anything today. Like I had a bunch of business stuff and doctor's office and just, you know, bad brain worms. I'm doing it so I will be ending next Monday. So you're not actually, by the end of this vlog, you're not gonna know if I completed it or not, unless I go freaking crazy. So yeah. Anyway, so the book challenges for the Autumn Readathon, again, I just randomly found on YouTube, were read a book with an autumn cover. So like a fall themed cover. Number two, read a spooky book. Number three, read a book that makes you feel cozy. And number four, read a book while drinking an autumn drink. So I think this is a good one to start because it's only like four. Cause the other one I was looking at has eight, eight challenges for a week of reading, which again, if your job is reading, then that's really easy. And for or people who just read like crazy, that's really easy. Not everybody can do that. But the other one I was looking into was one, start a new series. So that's the one book. Two, uh, been on your TBR too long, which is a lot of my books. Three, an LGBTQ fantasy. That's not bad. Um, four, a diverse fantasy. Five, multiple point of views. Six, a new fantasy. So you have new series and then new fantasy. So it's two different things. Uh, number seven, a sequel. And number eight, uh, book two, book talk recommended. I'm not gonna do that one. Like I said, I'm probably gonna do that one in October. But I also want to see if, um, I'm a big fan of Magical Molly, I'm going to see if she does one, I f like, she's more active on her Instagram and her TikTok than she is on YouTube. I'm going to see if she's going to have a Halloween readathon again this year, and if she does, then I'll probably do hers instead in October, but then I can do the fall one, actually, in November when it's supposed to. But yeah, anyway, so I'm going to pick my books. I know for a fact for the spooky book, though, I'm technically cheating because I'm obsessed with this, and I haven't finished it yet, so, and I've been kind of taking my time with it but I've wanted to blow through this. I want to read this. So this one's gonna count for my spooky book. As for the other books, I don't, I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Oh, it's YouTube notes. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. That's currently my Monday. Did I almost drop the camera? Yeah, yeah, I did. It's currently 8.30 in the morning. I woke up when my alarm set and uh, everything's already kind of going to crap, so. Anyway, I want to tell you, because I picked another book. So for my reading challenge, I told you... Yeah, so for a uh, spooky book, obviously, like I said, I'm reading Cotton Candy Massacre, and now you can see how it's like a darker cover, but you can see a little bit more details like the circus tent and stuff like that. So this is my spooky one. And then for... It's for an autumn-themed book find the books in the series okay I found it so if the cover will pop up yes okay so it is for an autumn themed book I got kiss of the blood prince by this author 
I hope it's not backwards. It looks backwards. If it is, I'll uh, slap it normal way. But yeah, um, I was having a hard time trying to find an autumn-themed book, and like all the ones I was finding were these giant fantasy tomes or my copies of um, The Witching Hour from... I, I'm so tired, I can't think of her name. The author of Interview the Vampire. Anne Rice. That was it. Anne Rice. I don't know why I couldn't think of her name. I love her, but I just my brain, tired brain kicked in. So I got those two. For a book that makes you feel cozy, I'm using an audiobook for this one. I'm technically cheating. But I have a lot of work to do, so I'm going to use... Um, I don't have it on screen, so I'll slap it on screen. Uh, it's one I read last year and I really, really liked. It was uh, Pen Pal by Dan Abernathy, I think is how you say his name. Uh, really like it. Really easy read. Uh, I really love some people finding, uh, some people doing the readings of it on him on YouTube. Can't speak. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to be doing Pen Pal by Dan Abernathy. As for a book while you are drinking a full drink, I'm still a little torn on. Still don't don't have much of an idea yet. But I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Because I've already got three of the four picked. So I think, because it just says uh, to uh, re uh, read a book while drinking an autumn drink, and I'm not planning on leaving today. So that would be like another day, kind of. So our power went out again. But I finished this commission, start to finish, so it's a commission for Morgan, the Zodiac Lord, for his Warrior Cats OC. Um, don't remember her name, I just know she's like a cryptid, and I love her. And so, yeah, I'm doing mirrored busts for my alchemist this month, just to try to catch up on things. But yeah, so, finish that, close. The power's out, or not the power, the power's not out, because you can hear the AC going. The power went out, and for some reason my internet won't come back, and so I'm like, sick. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to do some reading for the challenge. Nothing matters. I mean, they were talking about both, but I think that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soup is done. We have we have the noodle of the soup. How was your work day, honey? I'm not showing you. You're fine. He's not wearing pants. I never wear pants. Pants are for the proletariat. You don't have to wear pants in your own house. My house. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get to show this the other night. But I'll show it now. My Patreon sticker came in, so I'm going to be sending these off as well as my new business cards. As you can see, it's very sporkly. But yeah. Okay, so I finished this book, and technically the other two in the series. This is a big series, but I really want to talk about this series for a minute because, so, if you guys didn't know, but I mean, I did talk about it early in this vlog, I picked this book because I'm doing a readathon this week. I just decided to do it as my own little challenge myself, and I needed, I needed an autumn-themed book, and all the ones I was finding weren't catching my niche, and so I just decided, like, out of the ones I had, um, I needed an autumn-themed cover, and so I literally went to Amazon and pretty much played roulette, and this cover really got me. And I was like, ooh, this is interesting. And I ended up reading this book, its sequel, and uh, the third one, just all in one night. But I want to talk about it for a minute because, like, it's actually really good. <laughs> okay, so bad camera angle aside, I can't do anything about it. I want to talk about this book series for a minute because it really got me. So if you guys didn't know, I like romance, but another guilty pleasure of mine is I personally love finding... Um, like really bad, like literatica. It, it, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. 
And this is one of the interesting cases where when I saw the cover and I read the synopsis, I'm like, okay, this will be an easy book I can blow through in a night. I can get it for my reading challenge done, my, my, my personal one. And it is one of those golden gems that I might actually consider, actually, I'm not considering. I put it in my wish list. I want to get the paperback compendium of the, the first three, because I guess there's more in this series. There's like seven so far. So I want to see how it goes. But there's like a compendium, like a bind up, a nice paperback, and the cover looks gorgeous of the first three books. And so the basic plot is, because sometimes, sometimes when you go down the, the literatica romance fantasy genre on Amazon, uh, on Kindle Unlimited, you find a golden gem, and I think I found one of them. This is, this, it's so fast paced, it's so easy to read, because like sometimes you'll get some where they try to go very classic high fantasy with it, where they're like overly explaining things to where it gets, like for me it gets boring. Like I love having details in things, but when I'm having a whole chapter where not a single character is talking and you're just describing scenery, it, it's never done anything for me in any book series. Um, the same thing goes when the when the spicy scenes happen and it takes like either two pages or like a whole two chapters. It's like, okay, I get it, you know, whatever. So the plot of this book, this is very much a uh, porn with plot because the spicy stuff is like a really good buildup in this. Because um, sometimes you can already just like know where it's going Going, especially if you read these for a long time. So the basic premise is it's modern day at some point. The main character is just kind of going through her day and whatever. Her friend, who I was pleasantly surprised for something, I'll bring up a little later. Um, so her friend uh, ends up doing like a tarot reading for her because her friend's a witch, right? And so uh, she pulls a random tarot card that doesn't exist in the tarot deck. And uh, it's got a very special like picture on it and uh, they're talking about it. And like literally they use like some line of like, this card is dripping with masculine energy. And I was like, okay, this is one of those books. I I'm, I'm all right, I'm here for the ride, right? Like I said, bad literatica, guilty pleasure of mine. So we're going through it, she's going through a day, she's just kind of bored, whatever. She's not like, I'm not like other girls or something like that, where she's just she's just kind of listless in her life. And so what ends up uh, happening is, I'm gonna use her name, it's just easier for me. Uh, so her name's Elise. And uh, one day she's on a train going home Something else I really liked was this one actually takes place in the UK and they use proper UK terminology So I don't know if Alyssa Thorne, that's the author, is European or just knows a lot about, you know, European areas But you can usually tell when like an American um, author is writing how they like think Europe is, you know, and they don't use like proper terminology and stuff like that. Not that I'm an expert, but you can just, you can usually tell and it kind of takes you out of it a little bit. So when they use the proper terminology, if you watch like British shows and just, you know, things like that, and you know, basic things about other countries. Um, I really like that it takes place. They're like, it doesn't take place in New York, it doesn't take place in Texas, doesn't play, take place in California, which again, as someone who like placed one of her stories in like an alternate universe, California, I'm, I'm no perfect, but it's, it's, it's a nice change of pace, especially what they're going with. So anyway, um, she's on a train going home and pretty much uh, a giant like ripple in Stonehenge. This is like the basic plot of the book. So I know I'm like spoiling the beginning part, but it's at the very beginning and it's very fast paced after that. Um, this giant portal opens up and people in the train start like ripping each other apart. They're going crazy, but the main character, Elise, is like, what, why, why is this happening? What's going on? And that's when she sees like a wild hunt sort of situation with a bunch of fae people. They're described in specific ways that are like really nice and unique. But what I like is the main series centers around a curse around three fae brothers, which is the Autumn Prince, the Winter Prince, and uh, the Prince of Nights or Shadows, I think is what his like technical term was, which was really interesting for like all the courts and stuff that, you know, I'm a personal fan of a, a fan of, of mythology and stuff. And so they're there and the, um, his name is uh, Kian, I think is how you say his name. It's not how I was pronouncing it, but there's a couple times they pronounce it. Yeah, Kian, Kian is how you say it. Um, I read it as Kane, but like, I know it's supposed to be Kian. And so he ends up being like, oh, she can see through my glamours. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take her. And so he ends up doing this like binding spell to her uh, that's kind of forcing her to keep him, keep her in the castle. Very, um, a Court of Mist and Fury-esque kind of, uh, of a bond. They don't do the will they won't they though. Like Kian and the main character, they are 
to each other in the beginning. Uh, Elise and him just like hate each other, but she doesn't have much else she can do. And so you end up finding out there's this whole plot going on where each of the princes is cursed. And so his is pretty much, it's called the Kiss of the Blood Prince, so I don't think it's so much of a spoiler. He's pretty much cursed with like fey vampirism, which if you guys didn't know, a lot of old uh, vampire mythology comes from fey, so that was kind of cool. And what I like is he's not like a vampire. He has to drink blood, but he's not like a vampire. I'm not going to say what happens, but there is like, the way it's written out, it was so cinematic in my head, and it was actually genuinely horrifying. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. And it wasn't horrifying in like the ooh sexy way. Like it was like a, a scary event. Uh, and the main character reacts like I uh, actually loved you know, she reacted like a normal person would in that situation. I think that's something else I really like about this is a lot of the characters, you'll see in a lot of fantasy books and a lot of romance books where characters will be like, I'm the strong woman or I'm the arrogant guy or, you know, I'm the best friend with no personality and stuff like that. And this doesn't like really have that. A lot of the characters kind of stay the same and when they start changing character, like, like their character growth starts happening, it's really nice. Something else I liked is the first book is really short. It's only 168 pages, which, by the way, I should, that should be cut a lot because the first three, three chapters of the next book are in the back of this. I love this author for doing that because I sometimes hate when you get a prologue and the prologue is just like a, it's just like a tiny nugget. It doesn't really hook you. The first three chapters is actually really smart and uh, like something I might do for like when I finally like work on a series, like a proper series, you know? Um, because it really gets people hooked for it. And so that book ends up getting finished, but what I like is each of the princes has a very unique curse. Again, I'm gonna kind of spoil this, but it's important for the rest of the books. And when you go into the second book, you need to know about all of their curses, so it's important. So you have Kian, who is the blood prince, and he's pretty much, like I said, he's cursed with like fey vampirism that's like really unique. By unique, I mean it's more on fey mythology, so it goes off of like fey logic than like vampire rules. Oh, what was his name? Oh, why? <laughs> what's your name? <laughs> Bian? Bayan, Bayan, okay, I think it's how you say his name. Um, he was, uh, he's cursed with the fact that his heart is slowly turning into ice and he's like turning into a statue. Uh, and that does actually come into play in his book. And in the third one, you have Killian or Kill, who goes by, which by the way, I, d I knew a Killian in high school. He, he never went by the nickname Kill. I see that a lot in books. Any Killians out there, anyone else? Do you actually use like Kill as a nickname? Because the name is said Killian, so when it's K-I-L-L, -L, it's kill, because you're saying it the way it's said. It's like I'm playing Night in the Woods, and B, Bia is short for Beatrice. So you're not calling her B, you're calling her Bia because it's short for Beatrice. So, like, that means that by that logic, it's like, oh, hey, kill. I, I, I see it a lot in books, and it's one of those things I, I don't hear in movies, and I don't really see, like, out of books. So... When they call him by his nickname, I just, I, I, a nitpick. I can acknowledge a nitpick. Anyway, uh, Killian was like, uh, super friendly, super funny, super sassy. I love him. He's one of my favorite characters, I think, in the whole series. And his curse is that if he, if anything touches him or his skin, um, he, they just die. They like instantly die in like a horrific, grotesque, like a very fast but painful way, which again, I really like. I like that the curse is very unique. I like that it's like very strict to each brother. It has a purpose for it. And they actually, they, uh, I guess I really like this series because they also go by like fey logic that you do not see in a lot of books. Because a lot of books, like a lot of people got mad at like um, Holly Black for the the Cruel Prince series because they're like, wow, the, the title's called The Cruel Prince. And they're like, wow, the fey are kind of dicks and I'm like yeah that's yeah that's kind of how they are <laughs> like and if you want to go off of like mythology that's how they are and I like that in this series a lot kind of like Sarah J Mass books they bring other fey into it so they're like technically elves but they are different types. They don't go by elves, they go by fey, and they each have different, like, characteristics that I like of that. So they're very much brothers, like, they're seasonal brothers, but they're not just, like, here's, you know, a dark elf, a wood elf, a light elf, whatever. Those do exist, they pop up later, but it's not the point here. Um, and so they deal with other things, and so what was really interesting with this world that, that uh, Alyssa Thorne has written is how... I'm going on, this vlog is going to be so long, but I don't care, I really want to talk about this book. <laughs> I really want to talk about this book. 
it actually has to deal with the ramifications of like them just popping on Earth and doing like a kind of mini genocide. I can't tell you how many books I've read where that will like happen or there'll be like a cataclysmic event. And it's usually after the event happened um, and there's like never ramifications for it or if it is, it's like the worst case scenario. No, in the first one, when they come and do all this stuff and they go by fey logic, which, you know, don't work in human rules. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but there's like a whole point where like negotiations have to be made and they have to talk with people and they have to make barters and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm really invested in this world building. And something else I really liked about this series, I swear I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up. Is so if you, you ever read books like this before um, or you're a connoisseur like I am, usually you're like, oh, okay, a main female character was introduced in the first book. She's probably going to be in the romance interest in the second book it's kind of a yes and no like there's a couple of times where like some things are hinted like I said I brought up earlier now I don't know if this happens in the uh, later series but so far not happened uh the main character has this friend the the tarot card reading witch friend I was I'm like yep she's gonna be one of them she's gonna be one of the mates whatever and that wasn't the case at all I was genuinely surprised um and what I also like between the books is like time actually passes a lot of these books are usually like, okay, one book ends, and now we're going to go right into the second book with second point of views. And there's, like, time differences. So there's, like, a two-year difference between the first book and the second book. And then there's a three-year difference between the, th the third book and the second book. So now they've been, like, on Earth for, like, five years. And so a lot of things have changed in those five years. And like I said, I'm, I'm really invested in this. This much just okay. I'm not gonna, <laughs> it's not even the reason I read it. I'm just, I'm so sucked into this world and I think it's so great. And I want to read more of Alyssa Thorne's like other books because her pro style is like really great for me. And, and I think she'd be great for people with dyslexia because like she condenses to just the right amount. She gives you just enough detail to see everything vividly, but moves on with the story. She goes on with the story. The story is there. You can chew the scenery when you need to, but it's not the main point. I'm not going to go into, like, a giant feast for, like, three chapters. You know what I mean? I'm looking at you, George R. R. Martin. But anyway. Uh, anyway. There's my long ramble for that, but I just had to talk about it because I, I genuinely probably never would have found this series if I wasn't doing this readathon. And I, I like when you can do things like this, and then you can shout out an indie author because that's who Alyssa Thorne is. She's, she's an indie author on, you know, on Amazon. So, yeah. All right, so it is Thursday, September 15th? 15th. Yes. Yes, 15th. Um, we are currently eating dinner. Cody is home from work. Um, we're going to finish Cyberpunk, right? Yes. Um, and while we're doing that, once we're done with Cyberpunk, I am going to finish my book. Where is it? Um, <sighs> Wings of the Night Prince. That was it. Um after uh, eating my burger because that counts for one of my challenges because I started earlier today where it was read a book while drinking a fall drink and I got myself a pumpkin spice cold brew and I just forgot to vlog it because I was too tired and waking up. How was your day, honey? Busy. What'd you do? Work. Do you want to say anything? Um, don't draw penises on cars, kids, because I'm going to come after you if you do and you, you go to the school. You had students you. freaking draw penises on cars? Yeah. Oh. And then paint it over it, because it's a painting class. Oh, well. Yes. Joy. Yes. Okay, I literally have no other way I know how to do this. You're going to have an unflattering camera angle while I do my makeup. So it is Friday and I am going stir crazy. I'm going stir crazy. And I have a lot of stuff that I have to do today because I actually get to leave my house. So I thought, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? Because I get to leave my house today because I have to get stamps. And that's pretty much it. I only really have to get stamps. But I have not been able to properly leave my house in so freaking long because of our money issues and because of just other sh going on right now because where I live like if you go anywhere it costs money especially with how expensive gas is so I'm sitting here like yeah I want to I want to make sure that I have money for when my friend Sawyer comes to visit. 
By the way, I do have a makeup palette by a person that I didn't realize was, like, evil. Um, and I'm not a person that can just afford to throw it away. So I'm just gonna, you know, use it. So. <laughs> also, yes, do you like my tape? I do this when I just, like, I don't give a crap. I think I'm also gonna use my fingers. Because you know what? It works for me, so that's all that really matters, right? So anyway, yeah. Because I'm like, okay, I really need to get stamps, and I'm stir crazy, and I have not been able to properly leave my house in a long, long, long time. I, and, 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 uh, Cody got put back on night, so that's gonna affect my schedule a lot. I know it might not seem like it, but it's gonna. So because of that, I gotta, like, reschedule all of my stuff that I've gotten used to. Yeah, you know, what can you do? And so, because of that, um, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm kind of done. So my plans are, I'm going to go to the post office, I'm going to get the thing I need, I'm going to go to a Starbucks, and I'm going to get me a nice seasonal coffee. And then with that seasonal coffee, I'm going to read for more of that challenge. And then, and then, and then, and then, I am going to either go to a Bed Bath & Body Works and spend way too much money on candles, but it's something I love, and I love the Halloween seasons, and my house has not been able to smell nice in quite a while because of how hot it's been. So, because of that, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, so. It's kind of how I feel today. And so, that's where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take myself out. It's been a while. Am I about to spend money I really, really shouldn't? Yeah. But you know what? Sometimes it's what you need. Especially because Cody's not going to be here this weekend. Like, he's literally not even coming home tonight. So I'm like, okay, he ain't coming home tonight. So because of that, even more of a reason to treat myself. It's a little off. Yeah, it's fine. I'll blow it out with a brush. Whatever. Also, fun tip for people who don't know, if you have makeup wipes and they've dried out, you can just get them wet again. If like the makeup stuff's in the wipe, if you just get it wet, then it fixes itself and it rehydrates and you get all the nice good stuff that can be used to take your makeup off. Could I have probably done a better job if I didn't? Probably. Do I care? No. All right, now see, fixed it, decked out, wearing my Stola shirt, my bomber jacket, and I'm good to take myself out. So let's go out on a date, why don't we? So energies are good with me today. My birthday gift to myself came. So if you guys didn't know, this isn't sponsored because I gave them my money. And it's in a vlog and not a dedicated thing. Anyway, hey, I'll create though. I mean, I wouldn't mind someday, just, just as a heads up. But uh, so I used to get Owl Crate all the time. I loved Owl Crate. However, I got into a habit where Owl Crate is a pretty expensive subscription service. Um, Cause you get a lot of swag and a brand new book. So to me, if you're a book nerd, it's totally worth it. But it was getting to a point where me getting it every single month, there were a lot of themes and a lot of books. I just, I'm not gonna, sh I gave zero, zero like care about. I, I just, they weren't, they weren't any of the genres I like. And sometimes I like pushing myself out of my, my comfort zone. Also some of the stuff they have sometimes with the themes just didn't hit. And so I ended up having a lot of useless stuff that I didn't use. And after a while, it started becoming a point where I was like, okay, I'm donating more of my Owl Crate books than worth it. So I'm going to only do it to boxes that I really, really, really want. 
And then it went from that to, oh, okay, you know what? It is a better deal to get like a three month or six month package at a time. I usually only do three because I love the September, October, November thing. So I'm like, oh, it's my little birthday gift to myself. So I get myself the three month subscription for September, October, November. And so it actually came early. So I didn't actually get to go to uh, Bed Bath & Beyond to get the Halloween candles like I wanted, but I know there's a candle in here or a bath bomb. Something. So I'm like, you know what? The universe is being nice. So let's open this baby up. All right, let's look. It's very dark. I'm gonna put it here. Uh, okay, this this is the Memento Mori box. This little card. See, Memento Mori. Uh, okay, what are you? Oh, are you a little tote bag? Actually, okay, you know what? Cresswell and where? Okay, I don't know what series this is from, but this is gonna actually come in really handy when Sawyer comes to visit because it's nice and lightweight. This would be perfect for when we do like Frankincense and stuff, so. Ooh, lots of stuff this time. All right, all right, let's see. Oh, see, called it, I was right, it was a candle. One Flesh, uh, Owl Crate exclusive. See, so, all right, so here's the, ooh! Yeah, so here's the fiddle. Focus! Yeah, there you go. How's it smell? Ooh, it smells good, okay. Okay, let's see, what else did you come with? Uh, I don't know what that is. I'll check it out in a minute. Stories are the wildest things of all. <laughs> oh no, I like this one a lot. Let's see. And then this must be... Oh, are they not doing... Hold on. Oh, okay, so I figured out what this is. So, this is... It's actually really cool. I've seen this before. So, you keep this in your purse or your bag. And you hook it onto a table. I'll show you. Hold on. Ignore my dirty floor, but it proves the point. So... You put it on a table, like when usually when you're out somewhere, and your bag, your bag hangs off of it. So that way, you have a spot for your bag. That's actually really cool. I didn't know you could get these manufactured. So that's neat. Uh, I like the design too. Don't know what book it's from, but I like it. Okay, now we have the book. Obviously, uh, the book is supposed to be a standalone gothic uh, horror book uh, that's supposed to take place during, like, on a beach or something. I know it's why the whole theme of it is supposed to be the, you know, Memento Mori, but it's, like, got the, the jungly thing here. Oh, okay, so here's the enamel pen, because they always come with an enamel pen. And here is next month's box. And then they always have, like, a sneak peek of what is in next month's box. Let's see. Every October box includes the next paperback classic designed by, yes, oh, see, that's what I mean. The October box, and the reason why I love getting the October box is you always get at least two books. Couldn't think of it. Anyway, I'm gonna see what this thing is. Oh, okay. Ask and you shall receive. I have need a, needed a jewelry box for so long. <laughs> oh my God, this is, this is actually amazing. It's really small, but this is going to be so nice. I literally just keep my stuff out, so my really nice necklaces and rings are going to go in here. Oh my god, I am so happy. I, You know what? You know what? My luck is turning around. My luck is turning around. I'll do the snops in the book later. This also usually has like codes and stuff in it, so yeah. Overall, I think it was a great one. And then I think, I think this is a cup. I'm assuming this is a cup. It, it feels cuppy. Okay, so turns out it's not a cup. It's this cute little tea light flickering lantern thing. I don't know what the book quotes are from, but I think it looks neat. So I put it on my bookshelf, and it's got a nice spot. You can just change the battery out. And I like that it like, actually flickers like a candle. Okay, so I look like a hot mess, because I didn't like fully take my makeup off, but I didn't leave my house. So enjoy me looking like a clown. C pretty convenient, actually. I didn't think about that. So I'm reading more of The Cotton Candy Massacre. It's what I was reading today in the... Uh, coffee bean and tea leaf and so I'm about halfway through it from what you can see and so this was described to me as a splatterpunk book and a good intro to splatterpunk and so I didn't see it if you guys don't know what splatterpunk is um, I don't know if I talked about it early in the vlog or not long story short splatterpunk is where stuff is like grotesque and detailed so think of like the Saw movies in gore level but in detail and uh, you'll see a lot of people who are like jerks when they recommend horror books and stuff where they'll recommend them the like Serbian film level of splatterpunk for people's first book. If you guys don't know what a Serbian film is, I don't want to talk about it. I refuse to see it because it's, you can easily look up info on it and look up videos on why not to watch a Serbian film. 
But you'll have people do that where, like, they're jerks and they're like, oh, you want to get into horror? You know what a good intro is? A Serbian film. Um, you know, uh, what's another one I can think of? Uh, you know a good one to get into is... Hereditary, when, like, they've never watched anything like that. It's kind of a douche move. So how I've heard the Cotton Candy Manager... Ma mad... How I have heard the Cotton Candy Massacre described is it's a good it's a good gateway into Splatterpunk, and so it starts off pretty strong. Um, it's not it's it's gory enough that you can like kind of test the waters. And I was like, okay, it's not that bad. I mean, it was pretty graphic, but not nothing I like I, that was out of my ordinary because I re I read like Stephen King and other stuff like that. Um, and then for the next like 100 pages, like for a good chunk of it. You're just learning about the characters and learning about what's going on in the circus. I don't want to spoil it because it's like really, really good. I was sitting here because I'm like, I'm looking at the page. I'm like, okay, I'm like now over a hundred pages in and we only really had a gory scene at the very beginning. Like we've had other weird kind of things going on and character development things, which are good. Like the characters in this, um, Christopher Robertson has got to be one of my, I honestly think he's got to be one of my new favorite authors because um, he's an indie author. Here's the, the guy's name, Christopher Robinson, yeah. Because um, he also did the October Society, which, that's a really good, that's a really good, like, a, a middle grade YA, uh, like, little horror anthology series. That one, the October Society, is very much like a, um, are we afraid of the dark? Kind of, like, nostalgic thing. If anybody watched that show growing up when I was a kid? Or, like, the Goosebumps show, where it's, it's hokey, but it's it's got that more, like, twisted undertone. But it's a good thing that I think a lot of people could read. Like, I think it'd be fine for your kids to read the October Society and stuff. I would not recommend this to kids unless they're in high school. Um, or they can stand. Like, there's graphic sex and, like, gore and violence in this. Um, but what ended up happening was you're getting to the characters and you're getting into the storytelling and I'm like, okay, I, I'm loving the characters, I'm loving the story so far, but I'm sitting here like, I'm over 100 pages in and we only had like a thing at the beginning. Where's the, where's the splatter? But well, I got to it. I literally can't describe it on camera because then I can't like keep it in the vlog, but oh yeah, um, I now see what they mean. And once you get to, I'll say the mirror scene. So if people read this, they can be a little warned. When you get to the mirror scene with Sully, there's a character, Sully, I, I really liked. I don't think she's going to make it by what happens in this scene. When you get to the mirror scene at, around the 100 mark, um, that's when stuff hits the fan. Literally. It doesn't let you breathe. Like, I had to stop myself because I literally had to make dinner. It, it is now pushed to like 100. The, the gore is... Oh, through the roof. And now you care. You care about the characters this is happening to. So I see what people mean now is it's an intro. I'm not done with it yet, so I'm going to see how it goes. But I am, I am loving the Cotton Candy Massacre. It's fucking great. Also, if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's free on Kindle Unlimited. I bought the paperback for like 15 bucks. So it is Saturday. Here's a mess. But I think I'm finally going to do it. I think I'm going to go to the drugstore and get my hair dye and do the change that I wanted to do for a bit. Oh, it doesn't look that bad. Um, I'm in my uh, spooky, yeah, because I can't say the stupid word, <laughs> shirt. That my friend Lana got me last year, really comfy. She, uh, myself and Anna, we all have matching shirts. But yeah, um, I'm on a bad movie kick. I should, I should be reading. But I'm nearly done with Cotton Candy Massacre, and I really, really like it. And then when I finish Cotton Candy Massacre, all I have to do is listen to Pen Pal, which I can do. So I'm probably going to do that later tonight and finish it off tonight. So other than that, I mean, I do, I do technically have work. I could work on, but I really don't want to. <laughs> I'm already going to be editing the vlog later today when I'm eventually done with everything. But... Yeah, so I'm having a uh, bad horror movie night for myself, well, day for myself. This is the most safe for work screenshot I could find for it. Because uh, I found out that Piranha is on Netflix. Piranha is a god-awful, gory horror comedy that came out in 2010. It is the epitome of gore, like a gore comedy trash. <laughs> <sighs> trash heap. But for some reason, I love it. So 
also I didn't think I was gonna do this, but I totally forgot that so there's a character I remembered in because I've seen these movies before where I was like, so I got things mixed up where I remembered stuff from Piranha 3 Double D instead of Piranha. Every time I say it, I feel like I want to die inside. <laughs> but so it's from this it's from this movie, not the the first one. But I forgot he's got so the sheriff the the where is it? I'll zoom in on this guy. This guy. This guy. He's got Piranha PTSD uh, from the first movie. So there's a scene where um, later on in this movie, I can't show it obviously, but if you want to watch the movie, it's got blood, gore, sex, and nudity. But uh, he ends up getting up from his wheelchair and he's got like shotgun legs because in the first movie they took his legs. And so it's just something that always stuck with me with how just wild this movie is. So if you ever want to see this guy, because I've seen him in other stuff, this, this actor be a battle paraplegic that's in Piranha 3 Double D. All right, is it working? Okay. So, hey, it is like 5 or 6 a.m. right now. I think it's more towards 6 a.m. But... I finished Cotton Candy Massacre because I ended up waking up at like three in the morning. So I finished it. Loved it. It's easily on my top ten books of this year so far. Um, I need to like fill out my goods, my Goodreads thing and my uh, reading journal and stuff. But that means that I have finished, I have read so far this week. Five books, not including Pen Pal by Dan Abernathy, which I am probably going to save that for Monday because, so I still gave myself some time because today is Sunday and it's D&D &D day and my sleep schedule's ruined. So, you know, there's that. Plus I have to edit the vlog. I am getting my vaccine appointment. I have my appointment set for Monday. So the day you guys are seeing this vlog, if I get all my stuff together right, and I don't know how I'm going to react to the vaccine. So because of that, I'm like, okay, pen pal is like really short. And depending on how I feel or how I react to the vaccine, I can just pop that on in the background while I'm working, if not. So that's the plan. So I'm pretty sure I, yeah, I finished this reading challenge. I'm very, very excited. Um, I had a lot of fun. I discovered a whole new author, because I already read The October Society by the author of um, The Cotton Candy Massacre, and oh my god, I loved The Cotton Candy Massacre, but unlike uh, Kiss of the Blood Prince, there is so much I cannot talk about on this book be uh, because it's a splatterpunk book and it's stuff I really, really want to talk about, but I, I literally can't. Like, the stuff I want to talk about is really messed up. And really graphic and really gory and, you know, all the things that YouTube hates, so I can't talk about it. So, all I will say is, um, for Cotton Candy Massacre, actually, I did write this down. Hold on. Uh, I put trigger, right, I put trigger warnings. There's already trigger warnings, like, in the book and everything, but better safe than sorry. So, Cotton Candy Mass Massacre has, it has essay, but it's not graphic. It has R word, but not graphic. I hate that I can't say the word. Um, it's got extremely graphic gore. Extremely graphic gore. Uh, graphic gore related to self-harm because of the context of the book. Um, extreme body horror. It does have kid death, burning alive, and melting. I think that's fine saying it without giving it away. So if any of those things are hard, no like hard nose, totally get it. Totally respect it. Um, I'm usually on the fence of that. I have a thing with, like, burning, so when the burning scene happened, I was, like, not really prepared for it. But with how grotesque everything else was in the book, it didn't seem that out of place. I should say this, though, with Cotton Candy Massacre, as another heads up, is in the first chapter, there's, like, a, like a taste. I hate saying it that way. If you've read the book, you know why. But there's, like, a taste of the gore that's going to come later. And then for the next 100 pages... You're learning about characters, so you care about them. 
when stuff happens to them. So, because I remember being here, like, the only really gory thing that happened was the stuff at the beginning, and I'm almost halfway through the book, but it is one of those books, it's one of those books where the beginning hooked me right away. But, 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 once... Once the gore comes back, it doesn't go away. So, like, you, you do not get a moment of reprieve. There are, like, tiny paragraphs that are used as, like, little flashbacks for characters that are breathers. That's about it. You get a couple of paragraphs. They're good. I'm not saying that's bad. But if you're a person that can't handle literal gore, and by that I mean, like, literary gore you might want to pass this one. It's one of those things where I know a lot of people they can like handle gore in like animation or video games, but they can't handle it when they see it in horror movies or when it's like read to them as in like, you know, in 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 a book form. So, be prepared for that. I think it's great. I love it. Um definitely not for all ages. I do see after now reading it, I see I do see why people say it's an intro into Splatterpunk because it gives you that nice little reprieve and and then it gets you you get you ready for like oh okay we're 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 going we're going we're still going so I'm sure some people who have read a lot of other books must be like oh my god you big weenie okay, okay fine fair I've never read a Splatterpunk book before the closest one I got was the Troop by Nick Cutter and I don't think that one really counts that one's more of like a body horror book but um anyway uh. I loved it. Easily five out of five stars for me. Top ten books, maybe even top five books of the year. I've been having a lot of fun with this challenge. I've been having a lot of fun this week, even though my emotions have been a little up and down and my sleep schedule is ruined, but eh, such is life. So, yeah, I think that's a good place to end it. Um, yeah, so I will see you guys next week. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the vlog, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.